What is going on? What is going on? What is going on, party people? It's your boy, Coach D. Brown here. I want to say what's up to everybody listening in now and then on the replay. Happy Monday to everybody, man. Happy Monday to everybody. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I know I did. Um, enjoy some baseball. Had some weather issues over here, but for the most part, it was definitely a little, you know, a great weekend to just be on the ball field and, you know, have a little fun on the ball field with the kids, man. And, um, you know, shout out to the DB Elite family out there playing this weekend. Uh, it was an uh, interesting weekend. But, you know, what's up, Sega? What's up, t Sut? Latoya, what up? Keish, what's up? What's going on? So, you know, all love to everybody out there listening in today. Um, you know, this message is we're going to talk some hitting today. We're going to talk a little hitting. Um, we're always going to... You know, I always talk about stories that's going on in uh, in my life right now, right? So, what's up, Bill? What's up, Travis? What's going on? So, I was, you know, this weekend we we were out there and, um, you know, on the field. And, you know, I wanted to kind of talk about this because it, it, it goes along to, I don't care if you've been playing. Most, of, most people, I don't even care if it's spring training for, you know, big leaguers are on it. So this, you know, this advice or this message is for, from experience and definitely for, you know, everybody listening and playing baseball, you know, right at this time. Okay. So it's real simple. You know what I'm saying? We're talking hitting and I'm just talking about from a patient standpoint, we're going to talk about just chilling out. It's early. All right. It is early. Right. Pierre and Philly, what's going on, babe? So the three things I'm going to talk about is patience. You know what I'm saying? Uh, pitchers having an advantage early in the season and staying confident, all right, during these times. That's some three things I'm going to talk about today, all right? You know, be impatient, all right? Understand that pitchers nine times out of ten are ahead of pitch hitters at this time, and you and because of all of that, you have to stay patient, all right? Those are the three things I wanted to talk about, and these are stuff that's going on for what I saw this weekend, all right? So uh, anyway, Let's get into this content. So as hitters, we all, you know, we we feel like if we don't come out the gate and we ain't just, you know, stroking the ball, you know, we don't feel like we're, you know, doing what we have to do, our, our responsibility to the team. And as, you know, because you can work hard all you want, right? And I don't care. And, I, you know, I had this conversation with one of my kids uh, this weekend. And he was like, Coach, man, you know, I can't hit. I'm struggling. I hit a little bit early, you know, during the week this week with so-and-so on the side. And, you know, I feel, you know, like I'm I'm struggling. And I was like, really? I said, you're struggling. I said, how many games you play so far? Two. How many ABs you got? Like five or six? I said, <laughs> I said, so you got five or six ABs. You play two games and you can't hit right now. Look, coach, my swing, my swing. I'm like, do you know how silly you sound right now? And I understand. I get it. You know what I mean? Like he, He's his two games right now is the only two games of the season and he ain't got a hit yet, right? So in his mind, you know, he can't hit. That's literally what he told me. I said, I can't hit, coach. I said, from five or six ABs, really? I said, You realize in a major league season or you know, or or on a normal, you know, major league game, you you know, you could go 0 for five in a game, you know what I'm saying? So you you're 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 saying you can't hit from uh, basically two games of going 0 for five. Yeah, coach, you know what? I said, listen, man. And this is my message to you guys, all right? When it comes about being patient, I usually gave myself, I don't care if it was spring training, and even from, because you could work hard all winter, all right? And I want, I hope, I hope all you guys are, for the people up north, that I, I hope you guys are working hard, and the people down south, I hope you have worked hard, you know what I'm saying? And out west, because you know, I know you guys, we, you know, we playing now, right? So you could put all the work you went, you want in the offseason, which you, you, you should, you, you, you are, if you are trying to be high level, I don't care. We're talking, you know, 18 and under. And, you know, you know, eight, college and professional is a requirement to put in that work, okay, if you want to do anything, right? So, but a younger, you, you could pick and choose if you want to be, how good you want to be, how much work you put, how much work you put in the off season, right? So, anyway, you can put in all the work you want, but once you, you know, you start training and, 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 and practicing and, you know, everything is kind of structured. You know what I'm saying? You're in the cages. The lighting is just right. There's no wind. There's no, you know, it could be cold in the cages. It could be hot a little bit, whatever. But there's no, 
elements going on, right? So you could be in there hitting, batting practice. You know, guys could be throwing to you off the mound. And, you know, you could feel kind of still semi-comfortable semi in that type of, you know, setting, right? But it's something that even in, in – you could go outside and practice, hit batting practice or something. But when you – when the lights come on, all right, and that guy is trying to get you out, right, there's always – the elements, you know, the, you know, here we've been down in the Mid-South area, we've been dealing with, you know, rain and it's cold and it's, you know, like, like everybody, right? We get, you know, most, most places besides, you know, the West Coast and all that, you know, the, you're going to deal with weather at this particular time right now, right? So maybe days are nice, other days will be nasty. So, you know, you're dealing with elements and then the guys out here throwing and, you know, trying to get you out. So you, you, you are you need to give yourself, and I told the hitter, and I tell you guys, all right, give yourself, and I, I know it's tough, right? Because I'm not saying just go up there and not compete and just get out and be okay with it. No, all I'm saying is give yourself 10, 12 ABs. You know what I'm saying? And I mean that for a youth level, like 14 and under, you know, 18 high school wise, you know, give yourself, you know, even a few more ABs, you know what I'm saying? Um and and, and what I mean by that is like just compete hard. But don't take so much, you know, home with you that, man, I can't hit after two or three games. Really? You know, how, you know, the big scheme of things that, you know, how silly that sounds. And I get it, you know, for, for especially a youth player, two or three games is a whole weekend. You know what I'm saying? So you feel like, oh, my God, you know, but no, in the grand scheme of things, three games ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be patient. Give yourself time. To kind of get your bearings right, you know, seeing pitches, see arm angles, seeing different velocities from different pitchers, and you know, you got to get into the season. You know what I'm saying? You got to just like the the best that you can do if you're not feeling necessarily all that good is just try to get a knock. You know what I'm saying? Just try to you know that one for two, one for three. You know what I mean? Try to just get that one. It may not be a hard hit, but just get one to stay. You know, just to stay on the bases. Get you know, you may not feel all the way, even when you get that one hit, you may not feel all the way good. But you you know, you, your head is above water, all right? Even if you 0 for 3, 0 for 2, mix in a walk, follow some pitches, get, you know what I'm saying, you know, and stay, stay, you know, in that space where you're like, okay, I'm all right, you know? Because it, it used to take me, I promise you, every spring training, and no matter how hard I work, I get into this time frame because right now spring training going on in, you know, in professional game, right? And I, I it, those those first few games, it don't matter. I used to be breaking bats because I'd be getting jammed. My timing would be off. I'd be looking crazy, swinging at bad pitches and all of that. And I'd be like, man, I swung so good this offseason. Why am I scuffling? All right, why am I not feeling good, right? I would ask those questions too. I've been there. But I didn't have to be like, man, listen, it's going to take me 12 or 15 ABs. Just something just magically happens when you just kind of, you know, you just start start seeing pitches all the time and seeing guys and then timing starts getting a little bit cleaner and you're, you're off and running. All right. But that takes patience. You know what I'm saying? You got to be patient. So for like guys, 14 and under kids, you know what I'm saying? Like give yourself, you know, 10, 12 ABs. High school is a little bit more. And I'm not saying like get in over deep slump one for 20 and be happy about it. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, four for 25 for 20 in the very beginning of a season. If you're playing 30, 40 games in the grand scheme, that's if you're scuffing, you're not feeling good. You OK. You got to look for the positives. All right. But then once you kind of get locked in, that's when you got to really rock, you know, ride that, you know, when you get locked in, you got to ride that out. And that's how you get your numbers. But in the beginning, and I, I'm not, again, I hope you guys understand. I'm not saying to tell you not to go out there and compete and get hits. I never would say that. You want to get a hit every time you go to the plate, but that's not realistic, right? So my thing is just like, yo, just be impatient with yourself. Just, just, just understand that it's a long season. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon, okay? You want to be – you know, you want to be like this during the season, all right? You don't want to be like this, and then you steady, 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 and then you tank, you tanking towards the end. You always want a progression, all right? So be patient. Number two, it never fails every year. And I know certain, you know, even this weekend, certain pitchers weren't doing good. They had a lot of walks. To certain, I was talking to certain dads and friends of mine, you know, that I was seeing on the ball field. And they were like, oh, we walked a lot of guys, and you know. But nine times out of ten, pitchers are always ahead of, hitters at this time right you know hitters we gotta you know the, the velocity is there and the, the spin and you gotta pick up all of that our timing is not there because we're not seeing a whole lot of times right we gotta get our ab's up right so pitchers usually have the and if i'm wrong guys you tell me you know what i'm saying but pitchers usually have the um 
upper hand early. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those that it, it's 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 a time where you understand that they got it early. You got to compete, but eventually, you know, it's going to catch up to the pitcher. You know what I mean? Like he go he gonna be rocking and rolling now here and there, but. Once you guys get used to seeing Velo on every weekend or every day you're playing high school ball, you start getting locked in and the velocity is there and you're used to seeing the spins and all of that, then that's when you're going to bust the pitcher's butt. You know what I'm saying? But it takes time. Again, that's all patience and all of that. But pitchers, are all, I, I was saying this all weekend. I was saying this, I don't know how many times I said that to this weekend to my hitters. I was just like, listen, man, pitchers are ahead of you right now. All right? That doesn't mean you again. I'm never saying to say you you are fine with not get, you know getting hits or anything like that. But I understand the game. All right, that's why they bring in pitchers. In, in, again, in a professional setting, they bring in pitchers first. All right, February fifteenth or so, the pitchers report early. They start getting on the mound early and all that. And and a week later, I don't know if you guys know that, but that's how they in the, in the professional ranks. Pitchers always come in early, get a whole week ahead of time. Get there a whole week of time, a whole week ahead of time before hitters get in there. All right, then the hitters come in, and then right out the gate, the hitters they put us right in the cages. The first day or two of practice, they put us right in the cages with those pitchers. All right, now we just coming off of working out at home in the cages, and maybe had a you know a couple guys throwing batting practice to it in there. But our first day out on the, on, on the field, we got they call it pitchers practice, and that's exactly what it is. It's pitchers practice. They're like, hey, swing if you want. They have you stepping in there, and you got a guy throwing 95 miles an hour, trying to get his, you know, accuracy, getting his spin and all of that. And you've used to seeing 70, 75 from batting practice, if if that high, you know what I'm saying, batting practice all winter. And here you are, first day out there. And so they, they, you know, their arms are getting in shape, and they, they are ahead of you, right? Same thing with the youth levels. You know what I'm saying? They've been pitching hard all winter, all winter, and you've been in the cages and stuff. Now you get outside, and they, boom, they bring in their arm. It's there, the curveballs and all. Your time is going to be off. All right. But just understand what that is. You know, I'm saying that they're going to be ahead of you. OK, so saying that, right, you got to be patient. Right. Understand that pitchers are ahead of you. And the third third and most important is like I got to stay confident. Right. You heard me what I say with one of my kids was like, oh, coach, I can't hit after six A.B. He's telling me he can't hit. He's saying this before the game even starts. Do you do you do you think that he has any chance? I'm going out there and competing on a high level when he's talking about putting this in the air, like eventually, he's like, coach, I can't hear. The game didn't even start. And he's talking about six games. I mean, six uh, plate appearances. He can't hit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to stay during these times, whatever. I was in the cages this morning, and I was talking to one of my hitters, and I was just like, yo, dude, like, you, you, you understand that, you know, you just a click off, right? You know, don't. You know, what happens as hitters, you know, we missing our pitches and we don't, we, you know, we don't feel all that comfortable because we're just getting the season started. Then we try to start breaking down everything. We start overanalyzing this, wondering, oh, I was doing good in the cages. Yeah, like, yeah, you're doing good in the cages because a machine or, or, or a coach throwing 50 miles an hour at you, right? And, and you know, and you're in control of the environment. Yeah, you feel good. But you ain't had nobody really trying to get you out, hitting spots and all speeds and all of that. No. So, you know, keep things in perspective. And just be like, and you gotta have, you know, you gotta have that inner confidence. Like, I'm a my, I'm okay. You know what I'm saying? I could, I can hit a four for fifteen or or four for twenty, and and know that I'm gonna still have my numbers. I, you know, I ain't gonna be like all oh, stressed and all. That's that's when the mind starts playing tricks with you. You know what I'm saying? Like you just like, um, can I hit, man? What's going on? Maybe I need to start changing my leg kick. Now you don't work hard all off season. You don't have, you know, you don't work hard on a particular swing, and you get and you let ten abs or two or three games, right? affect you with the point you start thinking about switching something up you don't work i've been there i've been there you know what i'm saying i've been there before trust me but all i'm asking is that you give you know yourself the time understand that the pitch is early and you know just be like yo i'm confident enough in my swing and what i worked hard at all off season or in practice or with my hitting coach or anything i worked hard to know that i'm fine okay i'm gonna be all right and you gotta have confidence that you're gonna put up your numbers okay so those are three things I wanted to kind of talk about hitting wise, man. All right, on that. D Rob, what's up, baby? I see. Hey, speaking of rocking and rolling early, I see Aaron doing his thing, man. Getting off to a crazy start. Lawrence, what's up, baby? Rick Rock, what up? What's going on, man? Happy belated birthday. Hope you got my message, man. Lawrence, what's up, baby? Marcus, what's going on? Shay, what up? Manny, what up? Alicia, what up? Alicia, what up? 
Daniel, what's up? Elbow down, head down, throw butt of the bat through the zone first, hit through the baseball, hit off T. Yeah, I mean, all of that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Give that lesson to him. I like it, Daniel. Eddie, what up, baby? Travis, what's up? Steven, what's up? Chris, what's up? KC in the house. Vance, what's up? Mark, what up? All right, just real simple, man. I, you know, I ain't, it, it ain't nothing to stress over. That's my whole point with today. All right, it's early. Now, when you're in the middle of the season and you, you know, and you st- you're scuffling, that's when, you, you know, you got to go back to the drawing board. But early in, the, early in this, with weather, with being outside, I know a lot of these, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially up north, y'all ain't been outside yet like that, right? So down here, you're dealing with weather and rain and all of that, you know, you just, you ain't really just, you ain't really entered the season yet. So it's going to take you every bit of 12, 15 ABs just to kind of get your bearings, right? That's hitting. There's nothing to be, you know, up in arms and be, oh, I can't hit. And, 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 you know, coaches and everybody want to start changing up something and, oh, you need to start. No. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're going to tweak them a little bit, but it's just like, yo, it's, we all right. You know what I mean? We all right. So, you know, as long as you're taking aggressive hacks within the strike zone, that's all that matters. And if you, if you are hot, if you came out here out the gate, if your son it came out hot, then it's up to him to keep it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the beauty of this thing. Like, if you – it ain't nothing like starting off hot, you know what I mean, in the season. It ain't nothing like it. Now, the beauty is, you know what I'm saying, what's going to happen, the guys that are scuffling are going to end up being hot, and usually nine times out of ten, because you were so scorching hot out the gate, you're going to hit a little, you know, hit a little wall in the middle. And that's when that's the beauty of, of hitting in a lineup, right? Yeah, I ain't never really been a part of too many lineups where all nine guys is just hot, hot at the same time. When that happens, I mean, listen, I, ain't, I don't think I – I mean, I'm sure it's happened a few times here and there where – a lot of people in the lineup, maybe six or seven guys are hot, but I've never been there where everybody in the lineup is just extremely hot. Everybody getting two or three. That, ain't, that don't happen like that. That's why you got a beauty of nine, ten guys, or whatever, you, you know, you're hitting with the youth levels. You know, that's why you got a beauty of it. Maybe two or three guys that's rocking and rolling, two or three guys are scuffling a little bit, two or three guys that's just kind of treading water. That's the beauty of it, all right? And that's, that always kind of changes, you know what I'm saying? That always changes. So don't, don't you know, don't stress over that, all right? Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, I, you know, Bill says when he says, you know, the it's cold out there. Yeah, I mean, listen, man, ain't, <laughs> I get it all the time down south, man. You know, or it don't matter when I was playing. They be like, Yo, D, you know, you used to this cold weather. You, you, sh- you know, you, you should be alright with playing in the cold. I'm like, you don't never get used to playing in no, no cold weather. You know what I'm saying? You don't never get used to that. All right. And I used to say that about my swing. I'm like, listen, I heat up with the weather. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody like hitting with them hands being cold like that. Nobody. I don't care who you are. I don't care. Nine times out of ten, you know, most guys, are, you know, will tell you, uh-uh. I'd rather be 95, you know, heat index out the wazoo than cold. You know what I mean? And I'm from New York. I hate it hitting it with the cold weather. All right? Charlene, what up? Nick says, most kids that hit in cages need a good couple of weeks of outdoor hitting to get in the groove. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you just, you got to be out there in the elements. You got to see guys. You got to see the spin. You, you know what I'm saying? So like, anyway, I'm just saying that from just because of based off the conversation and, and what I've seen this weekend being on the field, everybody, you know what I'm saying? You got different levels, which is all throughout the year that happens. But, you know, for the most part, I had to, you know, cause I had to have this conversation and I know that a lot of, you know, you guys listening in, you know, your kids are just starting the season, if not, you know, about to or, you know, starting to begin the season. Now, you know, there are some guys that are on here that are just extremely hot out the gate, which is awesome. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Keep it going. Ain't nothing. That's when you that's when you know you're guaranteed to get your numbers. Right. And I say guaranteed if you keep working. But if you start off hot, I mean, a few times I started off extremely hot. Man, I had the best of the best. Right. You. But my 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 normal year would be I scuffled. Because even then, it's crazy. Even in, you know, in the pro game wise, you come in spring training, you take your time to get locked, you know, to, to get locked in. And once you get locked in the spring training, boom, you take off. But then you got to go to your season. And then that that first few games, it's a whole nother element, different lights and different atmospheres and cold weather and all. You know what I'm saying? So then I was scuffled in the beginning. Then I was eventually when the weather keeps, I just gradually go like this when the, when the weather hits. So listen, you know. That's just the beauty of playing sports, man. Beauty of playing baseball. All right. One one guy's there to pick you up when you're scuffling a little bit. Or, you know, you, you ain't feeling too good at the plate. That's when you just you put it put in the work. Stay patient. Know that pitches are here. Pitches are, you know, ahead of you at this time. 
And but you got to remain confident. You know, you got to remain confident out there because confidence is everything when it comes to this hitting thing. All right, you can't sit here and say I can't hit after six abs or after a few games or or after a bad a bad weekend. Okay, then now you're saying you can't hit. And you start the worst thing you could do is start trying to change up everything. All right, worst thing you could do is start trying to change up everything when you know 12, 15 abs is on. You know what I mean? Like, come on. You know what I mean? All the work you put in all the season, and you're going to abandon it, and now you start from square one. That's not the right move at all, all right? Not at all. You guys got any comments, man? How did your teams do? Uh, my 13-year-old, we, we, had a, we had weather issues, so we had a Sunday. We played one a single elimination game on Sunday with my 13-year-olds, and we lost. I faced a really good pitcher, and we lost to them, and my 12-year-olds went – uh one and one we had ran all weekend then my then my eight-year-olds went one and oh they beat they ain't lose they ain't have that i don't even want to put it out there but they're gonna keep rocking and rolling but they ain't lost the game yet but they got rained out the rest of the weekend and my two 11 year old teams they ended up uh scuffling um uh, they had a rough week i'm, I'm sorry my 10 year old my 10 year old team had a rough weekend um they lost their first they, they first they lost the only game they had friday night and their tournament and then the 11 year olds one of them lost their game the only game that they had so yeah my so my 11 my 10 my two 11s and my 13 played one game and they lost them but my eight-year-olds was and the eight-year-old and my 12-year-old team were the ones who did okay you know what i mean they they the 12 year olds went one and one and the eight-year-olds went one and oh and because it, it was rain all weekend it was cold and nasty so, you know, it was only certain teams played only on Friday night and the rest of the weekend got rained out. And the other um, um, tournaments over here a little, little further away, Friday night and Saturday got rained out, but we played on Sunday. So it was just a mix and match. So, um, you know, so mix, mixed reviews. Thanks for asking, though. Rod, what up? David... What's up, Dave? What's going on, man? Hey, Coach Allen is playing baller this week, and I thought you'd let you know. Yeah, I saw you. I saw you, man. I was going to respond. I got to send you some stuff, David. All right? All right, regarding the summer, I got to email you, man. All right? Look for my email. Mike, what's up, baby? NYC in the house. What's up, baby? Marcus, uh, I have video need for you if that's possible. I mean, I, I said this before, and I don't mind, you know, looking at certain hitters and stuff like that, but understand my time is, you know, my time is my time. So, I'm going to start opening it up. If you want, like, a true official, you know, dissect of your swing, all right, I'm going to charge. It's just because it's my time, you know. Um, you know, I can give you some, you know, quick, whatever. But if you want me to dissect your swing from top to bottom, you know, your son's swing, uh, Marcus asked that. You know what I'm saying? It just has to be a charge, man. It's just, you know, my time is my time, man. I right? hope you understand and respect that, man. All right. Luther, what's up, baby? I hope LJ's still banging that thing over there, man. All right. So, Anyway, man, I appreciate y'all. That's my time, man. Let me see what we got. Anybody else coming? Got any questions? What's a good age to get my kid a hitting instructor? He's five now. I'll say eight. All right. Start him about eight or nine. All right. He could retain it. As long as he's able to listen. And, you know, that's the only hard part. You know, I, I started training some seven year olds, but they were patient. You know, I mean, when I'm mean, patient, they were understanding. They weren't running around and all of that. All right. So, you know, seven or eight, Manny, you know what I'm saying? That's a, uh, you know, if he's if he listens and you know he's not, you know, when you get that at seven, eight year old, I actually work with a, a a young kid today. But you know, when you know they get to the point where they just you know looking around, they can't focus and all that. That's when they, you know. But you know your son, uh, you know your son. Good question though. Did you get picks in the deep round elite gear? I did get some picks in that. I did. I did. Understand and respect, 100%. Yeah, I did, bro. So, um, I'm come. I'm 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 behind the scenes working hard. I ain't gonna lie to y'all about this these these this gear. You know what I'm saying? I just had a conversation maybe an hour ago about about the gear and how to get it to you guys on a consistent basis. All right, I'm working behind the scenes, so you guys you guys get some of this. All right, um, you know hats and all that. So if you want a hat, you know, um, I'm working on the hoodies and the shirts behind the scenes. And you have instant access to that. But hats, let me know, man. So, um, J. Mai, what's up, baby? J, I got to get you. The hats just came in, man. I had some more. I, I know I was supposed to get it to you, man. But I got 
I know we ordered. I'm going to send that invoice out to you, speaking of hats, right? So, Mark, Mark, what's up, baby? What's going on, Texas in the house, man? So, you know, um, I just want you guys to, you know, all know, early in the season right now, do not sweat it when it comes to y'all hitters. Do not sweat it. All right? I know it's tough because it's hard. Even coaching and everything, it's hard. But on my end, because I played, I mean, I know how tough it is. Early weather, you hear me saying rain outs and, you know, we, we were halfway to one city and, and got rained out in the middle and got to go back home and waiting around, looking at the computer, or the scheduling, and a lot of this, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot. And then you got to come out and play and be ready to go. You know what I'm saying? And it's fields were in, in, you know, decent condition this weekend. So it's a lot that goes along, man, with, with the bad starts. You know what I'm saying? The weather being one of the main issues, okay? So keep it in perspective. 12 to 15 ABs. Give your, give your, I know nobody want to hear that right now. You know what I'm saying? God forbid you 0 for 12 or 1 for 12 and all of that. You're going, your child going to feel like he can't hit. You know what I'm saying? But now our, our daughter can feel like they can't hit. But no, you know what I'm saying? The end of the year is what counts. Okay. The end of the year's numbers what counts. All right. And let me give you another food for thought. I know they got game changers and all that type out there, but each parent out here, tell your kid, all right, especially if you're in high school, he needs to know his numbers. I, I, I go into this in deep detail. I go in this deep detail, all right, uh, with my program. I hit English. Shout out to my Big League Shortcuts training program. Make sure you go ahead and get that because I talk about this. Knowing your numbers, you know what I'm saying? You know how many guys and kids and all that I talk to that never know what their numbers are? You know, of course they're going to know they're 0 for 5 and all that, but once they kind of get into the season, they, they the numbers run. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is baseball. This is about numbers. You're not nothing wrong with you knowing your numbers. You better know your numbers. This is a, this is a measuring stick. I don't care if you're 8, 9, 10 years old. If you're 8, 9, 10 years old, your parents need to know their numbers. You know why? You know, just so you have a measuring stick. You know what I'm saying? You know why? You know, if you hit 800 as, a, as an eight, I know, it's, I know it sounds crazy, like eight years old, he's just playing, whatever. But no, what you are trying to do is establish some form of uh, a guideline, you know what I'm saying, a gauge, okay? So if you hit 400 as an eight-year-old, right, nine years old, you know, I want to hit the same or more. I want that to go until you get to a, a level of ball when you're in high school or something that you can't be hitting 600 or 700 or nothing crazy like that. But it's all equivalent, you know what I'm saying? So if you get in the habit of, like, knowing your numbers and training and letting them know what to look at, you know, a average, on-base percentage, RBIs, you know, strikeouts, walks, certain keys, you know, stats, you know what I'm saying, that you want to look at, all right? You know, extra base hits, you know what I'm saying? Like, getting a habit of learning that, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong, because sometimes I talk to coaches and stuff, they you like, what do you want to know your numbers for? Whatever. I'm like, you better know his numbers. That I don't mean to be like, hey, you know, you, you know, your kid goes to the stadium, hey, I'm hitting 600, what are you hitting? Uh, no, I'm saying from a personal standpoint, you and your, you know, family, it's all part of the branding and understanding, right? Because when the recruiters and everything start talking, they want to see their numbers. You, you know, they want to see numbers, what you're doing, okay? So if you like, hey, what'd you hit last year? Uh, I think I hit, no. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I had a challenge over here. I talked about this with somebody. Um, I was talking to some of my older kids, and I had brought, we were in a huddle, and we were talking about this. Uh, the, the, we were talking about um, knowing numbers. I had this conversation way back in September, right? We was about to start, you know, the college showcase fall season for my older group, okay? And I, one of the, you know, things I was telling them what they should know is their numbers. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many high school guys, especially in high school, you need to know your numbers, right? And they didn't know their numbers. So I asked, you know, my pitching, my pitching guy with his name, J.D. Stanball, he helped me out this fall. I said, J.D., would you pitch your, your years in high school? What, what, you know, how many years in varsity? He's like, I, I pitched, da, da, da. And he was like, boom. He's like, yo, I, my, my sophomore year, I pitched this. My junior year, I pitched this. My senior year, I pitched whatever. And I'm like, thank you. So I asked another guy. I'm like, you know what you hit? He's like, I think I hit around this and that and that. These are years later. These guys have been way out, well out of high school for years ago. You know what I'm saying? So know your numbers. They, you know, like I, it, it baffles me sometimes those guys that don't know their numbers. I'm going off a little bit, but just, just you know, understand like that's 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 this whole show and you know in, in total right there talking about that. Just understanding your game, you know, just just put a gauge, especially in early in the season. Like shoot for. I, I talked about setting goals too, right? Set a goal. I, I say it on this all the time. If you are 18 and under. And I mean, varsity high school baseball down. If you are trying to do anything in this game of baseball, you should be hitting 400 or better. Do I mean you suck if you don't get there? No. But I'm just saying you you need to be shooting for something. I'm giving you something to shoot for. 400. That's what I shot for. 
400 or better. All right? 400 or better. You need to dominate, especially on high school level, if you're trying to go D1 and all of that. All right? 400 or better. Now you put the gauge over there. Now you just put your numbers together. All right? You start every – every. you don't have to do it every game, but every every weekend. You know, if you're playing a tournament and weekend, write down, okay, I went two for eight. All right? Or the, or the next weekend I went, you know, seven for nine. You know what I mean? Like, start just doing that on the weekends. All right? After every weekend, there's nothing wrong with it. You got the game changers anyway, right? They got the stats. Just start knowing, your, you know, your numbers. That's all. High school wise, same thing. I used to tell my – I make my high school kids, even if their coach may not want them to know their numbers or – or they have their own stats. I tell my kids, you you write it down. I did it. I, I started in high school. I didn't do it earlier. But I want you guys, younger kids, you got younger kids, to do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? If he's a switch hitter, then you got to do a little deeper. All right? Left-handed, he hit X, Y, Z, boom, boom, boom. Right-handed, you know what I'm saying? Just just so you have some parameter, some gauge, okay? That's just my tip on top of everything, you know what I'm saying, what I'm talking about, all right? Know those numbers, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. There ain't nothing vain. There's no nothing... You know, like, oh, you all about yourself? No. And you don't have to go around promoting, hey, I'm hitting 400. No. You just know for yourself that, hey, I hit this, this what I hit last year. I want to hit this this year. All right? I'm shooting for 400 or better. I hit 420 last year. Now I want to hit 450. All right? That's just that's all we're doing. It's just gauging. All right? And the only way you know you know how to do that is by, um, you know, writing down those numbers, man. All right? <clears throat> T Sut, those yellow. I appreciate it, T Sut. Thank you, man. Some of my kids are like, why are you wearing yellow? I love my yellow jerseys, man. I'm in my best jerseys, I feel like. All right. Mark, thanks for the advice. No doubt about it, man. All right. Uh, Lawrence, appreciate that, man. Bubba, what up, baby? Corey, what's up, man? Bubba, hope TJ's doing good, man. We are. Uh, I definitely, definitely, definitely uh want to um Thank you guys. Um, shout out to my boy Richie Bennis of St. Peter's University out of New Jersey. He'll be on on Wednesday. All right, just confirmed with my boy Richie B. All right, he's the uh, hitting hitting coordinator and uh, recruiting guy over there at St. Peter's D1 school out of New Jersey. So he's gonna come on on Wednesday. All right, gonna get you know I try to get you know the college coaches to come on. So um, we confirmed. So on Wednesday, my boy, shout out to Richie B. My boy Richie Bennis. We go way back. All right. Um, but he's at uh, St. Peter's in New Jersey, uh, Division One school, and uh, he'll be coming on on Wednesday. So tomorrow will be me. I'll be on location tomorrow, and then Wednesday I'll have my, my guest on there, and then we'll see what happens the rest of this week. All right, so tomorrow, 3 o'clock Central Time, be there. Be ready. All right, we'll keep this content coming. Wednesday I got a D1 coach coming on. All right, we're going to talk a little hitting, a little, little – uh, I prefer the blue or black jerseys and hats. I got you, man. I got you, Mark. You know, I got plenty to choose from, though, man. I like my little jerseys, man. So I take pride in that. But anyway, yeah, so be ready for that, man. Uh, Y'all be ready for these next couple days, man. We'll say peace and love to you guys, man. We are another rain out today. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's that weather, man, killing everybody out there. You know, when are you printing some? What's up, party people shirts? I know, right? Gosh, you know what? Oh, uh, you Bill, you, 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 thank you for being on top of that, man. Cause I, I had just put in some, some, di- some, some designs for some t shirts, um, to a graphic designer. And I will, I, I, I did not put what's up with party people. Do you know how crazy that is? I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I'm gonna put, I'm gonna push that to that, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and make that happen. I'm gonna have a, you know, a nice little choice, at least some t shirts for you guys to choose from. All right, and then the DB lead and all that gear will be coming in. But I got some some from women. I got some from dudes, you know what I'm saying, with some nice cool sayings and stuff like that that I I literally just this past weekend came up with the designs and sent them out. So they should be ready, man. All right, hoodies, all of that. I'm going to get y'all, man. I promise you. I'm going to have it, man. You know, I hate, I hate, you know, having to wait around and all of that. But my thing is I've been having issues with fulfillment of different programs, you know, products, I mean, of different stores and all that so i'm making one on the side and i'm want to i'm going to present it to you guys all right so um anyway shameless i'm I ain't gonna say shameless we doing it i'm gonna make sure y'all guys gonna love it it's gonna be cool so peace and love to you guys tomorrow at three o'clock we keep this knowledge rolling all right wednesday got my boy richie richie bennett's coming on st peter's new jersey st peter's uh university out of new jersey um we are uh I mean, can we get that gear at? 
I was, it's gonna be on on the link right here. I'm gonna post it right on here. All right, Mark. I'm gonna make sure it's, it's ready, man. That's a must see with Dennis. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, Richie B is coming on, Corey. You know my boy, Richie B. So you know our boy, I should say. So yeah, no doubt. He's coming on on Wednesday, man. So um, be excited to kind of wrap. We talked a little earlier today. I was trying to chase him down since last week. So you know, I just want again. I just want to bring on you know guys, great content. You know what I'm saying. You guys get exposure to schools from all across the country, man. All right, so St. Peter's, New Jersey, St. Peter's out of New Jersey will be on on, on Wednesday. My boy Richie B, and we keep this ball rolling. I want to say peace and love to you guys. You know, you guys when we talking this hitting and everything. What's up, Tammy? If you guys talking about this hitting, you know, I, I, I'm always gonna rep my own program. I right? the Bigly Show because I talk about that, know your numbers, and I get it deep in detail. And I even talk about being patient. That's something that I've talked about on my program too. So again. It's always there for you guys. I'm always here to help, man. Any way I can. Grab the program, all right? I want to say peace and love to you guys. You, uh, you know, we, we'll make it happen. Got to have 3XL and 4XL. All right, I'll make a big, whatever you need, Mark. I appreciate you telling me, all right? So peace and love to y'all. Gear coming. Go get that uh, training program. My boy Richie B, D1 pro, uh, coach, coming on on Wednesday. And we're going to get this ball rolling, man. I want to say peace and love to you guys. Have a great rest of your day. See you tomorrow. Peace.